After President Obama's visit to London, the battle lines in Britain's EU referendum campaign have shifted. Here with me is Janan Ganesh, political commentator, to discuss whether, as many people believe, the Brexit campaign has been put on somewhat on the defensive. And what cards do you think they have to play? Well, you saw what happened last week when they tried to play the economics card. There was a Treasury report which said uh, Brexit would be quite damaging for the British economy, and there's another report from the Treasury expected in the coming weeks. And you saw what happens when they play the geopolitics card. Barack Obama's visit was conclusively anti-Brexit. He uh, used quite a provocative phrase, back of the queue, to say that uh, Britain could not expect a favorable trade deal anytime soon with the US. And what I conclude from that is that the longer the Leave campaign spend on those two subjects, the worse they do. All they have left is the card of immigration, the one knockdown argument for voting to leave well, the Well, let's EU. explore that proposition on immigration. Uh, are, are, are the Brexit campaigners uh, talking about immigration from the EU or immigration from the wider world? Pr principally from the EU. And they have quite a connection with the public on this subject in that immigration wasn't a massive political issue until the mid-2000s when EU expansion and an influx from, from Central, the Eastern Europe, yeah. Exactly, from Central and Eastern European countries made the issue rise up in terms of salience. And they can say that leaving the EU would make a difference if, and only if, they suggest not the Swiss model or the Norwegian model. You know, these are countries which are in free movement, they're in Schengen on top of that. But if they advocate total exit from the EU, uh, non-participation in the single market, they can retain or regain uh, more control of immigration policy. And given that it is the second most salient issue in the country for voters, I think it's the last, perhaps only, hope they have of, if not winning, then at least losing this referendum well. Now, there is a slight problem, is there not, that if you decide to regain complete control over your national borders and you decide that you, you want to end this freedom of movement inside Europe, you you can't have access to the single market, yeah, and, uh, which is what, obviously, Norway and Switzerland enjoy. And I think that's, it's the most extreme form of exit, you know, saying no to the single market rather than the halfway house that Norway and Switzerland have. But I think the most extreme answer on a political level is actually an easier sell to voters than what the Leave campaign is saying now, which is, depending on the day of the week, depending on the interviewer asking them, the Swiss model, the Norwegian model, the Turkish model. Last week, Michael Gove, the Justice Secretary, talking about Albania, Serbia and Ukraine. At the moment, they're all over the place when it comes to the, f the version of Brexit that they favour. At least by going for the extreme version, they have an answer. It has a tangible benefit in terms of immigration policy. Well, now it's funny you were talking about Albania because actually, if you decide to go for this extreme, uh, as you put it, uh, model where you really do control your own borders, and but you want free trade, you are then effectively putting yourself alongside the Albanians and the Serbs, uh, uh, saying essentially, uh, well, we just want a free trade agreement. Yeah, and the uh, Albanians aren't happy at their name being invoked by Michael Gove as a model of Brexit. Because they want to join the EU. Absolutely. And they, they, this, you know, he cited countries which are, are either theoretically in favour of uh, wanting to join or have already submitted formal applications, which is the case in terms of Albania. And it is a hugely um, provocative thing to say that we, we will leave entirely and not retain single market access. Businesses will be, will be very panicked. But it does give the Leave campaign an answer and something more robust than the, the menu of seven or eight options that they have at the moment. And you saw what has happened last week and in weeks before that when the, all the Remain campaign do is say, fine, you want to leave, and become what? And there's no clarity about the answer. And at least an extreme version, I think, holds up to that scrutiny more than a nebulous, multifarious answer. Britain dining on the Balkan periphery. Yeah. But the question, uh, and I'm not going to put you on the spot because we've got several weeks to go before the June 23 referendum, is has the momentum shifted at the moment, at least, decisively towards the Remain campaign? I think there'll be changes of momentum in the remaining eight weeks, and the lead in the opinion polls for Remain will shrink and expand and shrink and expand. But last week, what I think happened is that certain doubts were installed 
in swing voters' minds about the economic wisdom of leaving, about the geopolitical wisdom of leaving. And on June 23rd, those will rise from the back of their minds to the front of their minds, and they'll vote accordingly. Janan Ganesh, good to be with you. Thank you.